We ask your blessing on this food. Help us to share with others what we ourselves receive through your great goodness. Amen. 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 Please be
This, this is your big moment to be famous. John? Are you all having a lovely time? We are, we're having a great time. Yeah? Smile, Mary. Oh, that's nice. And you're all enjoying it? We are. Right. Thank you. Well done. I'm doing this for Colin. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I enjoyed that. <laughs> well, can, can you can move in slightly, John. Thank you. That's lovely. Really good. Smile. Oh, that's nice. Colin? Oh, hello. <laughs> hello. Oh, Are you enjoying yourself? <laughs> Lovely, thank Can you. Can you say yeah. something? Something like what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving it to you. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> hello, hello, George. Hope you're having a good time. Right, thank you. Is this, a, is this the official record? Sorry? Is this the official record? Well, I don't know. I think I made you do mess of it last time. It was funny, so they asked me to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nice. Right, that'll have to do, I think. I don't know if it's working. I think I've done it to get rid of 
didn't yeah. they actually? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's got a white, that's a movie one. <laughs> Last time I did it, it was so awful. I think they cut it all. <laughs> Here's the uh, the time that you've all been looking forward to. It's the uh, speeches. Uh, the first speech uh, will be uh, led by, be proposed by Senior Vice President Sherry Harrison for the President. There he is. Thank you, Lord. I'll. Uh, Get over here if I may, so you can see me, or actually rather with somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the choices here. We've got the um, four pages of closely written text, or the back of the envelope job. So, uh, then what we have want today, um, I know the people on my table have got a, a few bets on um, length of speeches, so I'll, and I haven't bet myself, being totally impartial. But we are going to go for the short one, so we'll get rid of that. Um, right, how do we find out about George? I first of all went on the internet on uh, Friday, and George Larkey, type in George Larkey, and up it pops. It's a man who's got uh, 44 horses and, and 120 acres. And I soon realised that that was the wrong George Larkey. <laughs> Not the George Larkey that, no. Um, the, he does, however, appear very shortly after that with many photos uh, in Rotary, something which I'll come back to in a minute. I first met George uh, in the Sugar Hut in Brentwood. <laughs> that was before it was the Sugar Hut, it was the White Hart. <laughs> and there was um, uh, other clubs in the area, not just Haywing, I think Brentwood clubs as well were involved in a recruitment drive. And I don't think George was a recruit then, he was actually tickling the ivies, as we've heard uh, lunchtime today. He was entertaining throughout that evening, and uh, that's the first time I saw George. And I think he was by far the best recruit ever, Rotary ever made uh, on that day. Um, it's a real um, <coughs> asset to Rotary. So, George was obviously a magician, uh, magician <laughs> a musician. <laughs> um, I, I soon got to learn he was a teacher as well. And no sooner had George joined Rotary that he took over vocational service from me, and he's been spectacular in that role, uh, which he's fulfilled virtually ever since, uh, in, not only in name, but um, assisting all the way through. Um, he's um, being a musician as well, he's brought us entertainment at Christmas parties, etc. I remember one occasion when my daughter was singing along with George, and I've got uh, some marvellous photographs of that evening at the old folks' Christmas party, and George uh, is, does the music, uh, organises it spectacularly every time. Um, getting back to the photographs, one of the other things that George has done, particularly with Colin over there, Colin Davis, has brought new life to the bull. I know the bull, our magazine, is going to change its format, but George uh, has thrown himself into that with editorial comment and ideas, and you only need to look at the, the, uh, the web, not, not just the Rotary website, but you just type it, go into Google and type in George Larkey. There's loads and loads of photographs of all the things he's done uh, in connection with Rotary. It's a marvellous uh, example, George. Um, can't get by without mentioning Janet as well. She also has thrown herself into the... Uh, Rotary movement, in a wheel, presence of inner wheel, uh, a real driving force, uh, and that organisation has uh, flourished uh, since uh, Janet has been a member of that. Um, the presidential year that George has just had, I should mention, um, the main thing about that is I've only had to step in for him twice, I think, as vice president, during the entire year, and it's a remarkable level of commitment that George has shown to the club. And I think on that note, I would give you the toast of our President, George Larkin. President George. President George. President George. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And I'll pass you on to uh, the man himself. Oh, no. The uh, the prompt is uh, no other than our President, George Larkin.
very sorry, I haven't got a short version. <laughs> and, um, first of all, I'd just like to say a big thank you to Tom Rogers, who played the piano beautifully during the evening. Thank you, Tom. Thank you very much. Well, so far, so good. Um, I know where I am. <laughs> this is an in-joke, by the way. Um, I can remember what I'm supposed to do, and the room is not spinning. But a few thanks before I get to the main thrust of my speech. Um, oh, incidentally, um, go, just sidetracking. Uh, you know when you're, you're beginning to lose your memory, you're not very good. It's because people buy you socks with your name on. <laughs> Have you got those? First of all, it was George. I used to check every now and again and make sure I knew who it was. Then I got thrown a little bit because somebody gave me a pair of socks with one named George and one named Thomas. <laughs> and I never knew who I was after that. <laughs> Today, thanks to my... Um, my brother, at Christmas, I am Ben Sherman. <laughs> so, I will not be asking to George anymore. Anyway, coming back to, uh, to this lunch. I hope you had a good lunch. Um, it's a lovely, uh, lovely place. And I'd like to thank all the waitresses and the waiters for their job. They'll be lovely people, lovely young people. Good manners. And uh, very good service, thank you. And uh, thank you all so much for supporting this event, the President's Lunch or the President's whatever. Um, that, that's, that is very, very nice and I appreciate that very much. And I, I'd just like to do a couple of special um, thanks. Um, he's busy enough as President of a club, but to be a District Governor of a club is tremendously, co the commitment is tremendous. And I'd like to thank uh, Neil, Neil Muir, our district governor, for coming along today with his father, Jane. Uh, this is his second function today. So, thank you very much, Neil. Give me a round of applause for that. That's nice. And, uh, of course, our um, assistant governor, who, uh, Peter Douse. And where is Peter? Oh, there he is, Peter Douse. And Mary, thank you so much for giving up your time and coming to support our family. It is much appreciated. <coughs> and may I say, Peter, uh, good luck as you journey towards the top table in the next few years, because Peter is going to become a district governor in next year, after this this coming year. So good luck on that journey. Um, I'm going to introduce you very quickly to my guests. Um, I have my oldest brother, Lawrence, and his wife, Iris, and their son, Kevin, who shares a birthday with the same name as me. Um, not today. Uh, my brother, Victor and his wife Joan, and my very good neighbour, and a friend of Rotary, oh, yeah. Bill Murphy. Yeah. So. And then finally, she has been introduced before, I'd like to thank uh, my wife for all the support she gives me, um, and all the aggro she gives me, because uh, I know I'm a naughty boy sometimes, and Rotary can take over a bit. And uh, I'm sure lots of you have been there. And uh, we'll, we'll move on. We'll move on. But um, I'm, the two people that I would have liked to have been here today are, are missing today. I would have liked my son, brother, and my daughter and Joanne to be here. But I'm very proud to say that today they are putting, uh, they're doing what Rotary says: service before self. Uh, Robert is a serving policeman and doing a very dangerous job and he is on duty today. And I thank him for that, because he's keeping us all safe. And my daughter, well, she's got an even more dangerous job. She's taking a load of brownies to brownie camp. <laughs> so, um, I miss them. I wish they could have been here, but they are doing a grand job. Uh, now, <clears throat> this is the philosophical bit. Do you wonder why you're here? Why you're actually sitting here? How did you get here? While you're at a Rotary function. And I, I, I find it all a bit funny and fascinating because uh, my journey to become your president, uh, we were a working class family. We knew nothing about Rotary growing up. 
Uh, my dad worked in the factory, my mother was a housewife, and uh, she would have been so proud of me, I can tell you, she was lovely. Wanted to be really upwardly mobile, my mum, she'd have bought a new hat and gloves for this occasion, I can tell you that. Um, she would have been really proud. Um, and uh, she, you know, her son, President, wow. Just to put that into context, my context, my, my son's uh, partner, she's got a little boy there. And he was so proud at the, uh, the um, Remembrance Parade last year when I was walking along with members from the club. I was walking along and I met him for the first time. He was so proud to meet the President of the United States. <laughs> it made his day. I didn't tell him. <laughs> I just said, I'm sorry, kid. Um, so how did I get here? Is it, was I meant to be here? Who knows? I mean, it almost didn't get started. As a two-year-old uh, during the war, I happened to have a, I fell on an electric railway line and uh, a bit burnt up a bit, uh, but a few scars and a few scrunched up bits. And, but they, you know, like kids, I got over it, got on, totally unaware of what trauma I put my parents through and my, my brothers, but you know, that's life, we, we got on with it. In my family, to, to my mother and my father, um, two things were very important, education and music. Um, my brother Laurie, fantastic drummer in his day. <laughs> <laughs> he's gone now, he's lost. <laughs> fantastic drummer. My brother Vic played the saxophone. Me, it had to be piano, nothing else. I wanted to play the violin, no. Piano, got to stretch your hand. The hand was a bit scrunched up, so you got to stretch it. Well, I was like, so thankful that she made me stay on the piano. Uh, I, you know, I just carried on school and not a very good student, typical sort of lazy teenager. Vic stepped in, gave me the old pep talk about the importance of studying hard, doing your exams. I took note of that. Laurie stepped in, introduced me to a jazz pianist because my piano lessons were faltering on the altar of classical music. I was getting bored. He introduced me to a fantastic jazz musician, and that really, those two events, like the encouragement and the meeting of this, this guy, changed my life, really. It, uh, I became a musician, I became a teacher, um, and, uh, and played in bands. And uh, two, two things almost altered my journey towards today. That was when I was at school. Uh, in Stratford Grammar. I got stabbed in the back by my best friend. That was good, wasn't it? He was just seeing how far a sharpened electric screwdriver would go into a body. He didn't mean it. It frightened the life out of him. It frightened the life out of me, come to that. But, you know, you get over these things and you carry on. We still remain mates. When I was at college, of course, it almost nearly ended there because I was going to a band job I had a double bass in my car and the bass player and we never got there because we were in a fatal car crash. It wasn't fatal for me of course, um, but it was a very serious car crash and uh, a few more scars were added to the body and a few more bumps and bits. But you know, you get on with it, don't you? You carry on. Big jump forward though, because uh, you know, I, I, I worked for 40 years, but during those 40 years, um, as teacher and musician, I came into contact with Colin Freeman. Um, I bought my music from him. I still do buy my music from him. Keep the poor old devil in work. <laughs> and, um, um, and he invited me one day for, to, to play at the function that Jerry referred to, which was a recruitment function for the interclubs. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, you know, he, he suddenly dawned on him, oh, perhaps I can ask this guy to come along. Well, well he did. Um, he took me along, it was in Norman's pub in, indeed, where I played, and he took me along to a meeting, and what he didn't realise, and a lot of the guys here didn't realise, that I'd been mixing with you lot for years and years and years, because as a member of a band, we played for all your president's nights. And that I knew a lot of you before you knew me or knew who I was. Anyway, I liked what I saw, 
And of course I became a member. Uh, and, and the rest, as they say, is history. I made so many, many good friends um, in both this club and in other clubs and uh, through my music. Uh, certainly one or two people are not here today for various reasons um, who I would have loved to have been here. People who have, uh, have passed on and who were so supportive to me. People like Tony Barber too, who's not very well at all. Lou Becker's really supportive friends of mine. Um, always got a good word to say and, and nice company. And, and unfortunately, through health and other reasons, they're not here today. But um, Eddie Truman is another one who's not here today. But I had a great letter from him just before I came out. I opened my email and it was a great big long letter, too long to read. But he points out how much, uh, he, he was so encouraging in the letter, how much Rotary means to him um, and how much he misses it. So we come to the end, the big question. Where do we go from here? Is this it? Is this the journey that all those mishaps... Does it finish here? Well, I pick them alone, hope not. Because <laughs> I've got some plans uh, for other things. And But who knows? Who knows around the corner? And that's the beauty of life, because we don't know. And all we can do is try to make some sort of sense of it, life as it's been, by looking back every now and again and trying to make sense of what happened. And hopefully there's lots more exciting stuff to come for me and for all of you. So I finish by saying, may your journeys continue to be eventful, happy, satisfying and all that you would wish them to be. And before I say the final toast, I'd like to thank the organisers, Norman and Jeff, and anybody else who had a hand in the flowers, aren't they lovely? Um, Christine, who, who supplied the flowers for us. And anybody who had a hand in organising our event today, thank you so much because it's made my day lovely so far. And um, I would like to have the final toast with you all. Please do not be upstanding because you've been jumping up and down all day. But I would like to uh, make the toast. The toast is the Rotary Club of Hornchurch and Arminster and Absent Friends. Janet would like to say a few words. Don't worry, I haven't been up since four o'clock this morning writing a speech. But I did just want to take this opportunity to, to say thank you to all the Rotary members. Those of you that know that George hasn't been that wonderfully well over the past few months, and hopefully he's on the mend now and will you know, take up all his activities that he wants to. So I did want to say a big thank you to all of you and a particular thank you to Jim, there's Jim, for looking after him on the day which was a bit worrying when we were at the hospital. So thank you Jim and thank you to all the members. Thank you. Thank you. There's the, um, he's looking worried over there. <laughs> the partners and guests and is proposed by past president John Crowley. Church in Upminster, it is upon me to give a hearty and warm welcome to all the guests and partners. I would like first like to say um, a warm welcome to our district governor Neil Muir and his partner Jane, and also for Peter Dowse for taking time out on such a busy schedule that they have throughout the year to be here with us today. So thank you. Uh, and to our honorary members, 
we have past district governor Brian Piccolo, and I'm going to try and pronounce this correctly, who is a hook couture designer and a, and a strong supporter of the club. Uh, Brian's also an approved dressmaker to the Queen, to the ladies amongst you. And ladies, it is said about Brian that when any of Brian's dresses, that you can wear a piccolo dress inside out and still look good. <laughs> uh, a warm welcome to another honorary member and someone who's worked very hard over the years and who, who actually um, initiated me into uh, Rotary himself, uh, and that is uh, Colin Freeman and Jared. And thank you for the Colin's done a lot of work for not only for the Rotary Club of Long Church and Upminster, but also for the foundation of Rotary. So lovely to see you as well, Colin. <laughs> and ladies, it wouldn't be, uh, it wouldn't be complete this toast without mentioning how wonderful you all look today, as always. And not forgetting the gentlemen partners of our lady members. You don't look too bad either. <laughs> they brush up well. Uh, without further ado, I would like all members of All Church and Upminster Rotary to be upstanding and drink a bumper toast, which is our guest and partners. Guest and partners. Thanks for that, John. Lovely. And now, I'll call my sister partner, Neil, to give a response, please. President George, sorry, Ben Sherman. <laughs> I wrote that down just now. Fellow Rotarians and guests, good afternoon. Thank you very much indeed for inviting Jane and myself to this function, um, which is, uh, has been a really, really great afternoon. As uh, has been mentioned, this is my second event of the day. Um, we were up early for the uh, 10 mile run at Great Baddo. Now, um, we didn't actually take part. <laughs> But there was a, a two-mile fun run, and we didn't take part in that either. <laughs> but we did assist uh, Tessa Sanders, uh, uh, Tessa Fatima Whitbread. When have I got Tessa Sanders? Oh, Fatima oh, Whitbread to start the race. We, once we'd seen the winner come back of the two-mile race, who seemed to be back before we'd actually noticed he'd gone, um, <laughs> in about. Uh, eight and a half minutes or something, no, it was about nine and a half minutes, um, we were invited to go for coffee. And we went into the room for coffee, and they said, uh, oh, there's some sandwiches and cakes. And this is about um, half past 11. And we said, uh, well, we'd love a cup of coffee, but I don't think we'd perhaps, um, well, we could have a few cakes and sandwiches, because <laughs> they might not give us much for lunch. But uh, we actually declined the sandwiches and cakes. I'm very, very glad we did, but uh, inevitably we got out of there a bit late and we arrived here ten minutes later than we intended, but I'm very glad we got here. Now before leaving for the ten mile road race this morning, I looked at your club website. It's actually a very good website for Rotary. It's a very good website for ro compared with Rotary ones in this district. And I was just scrolling down it and I found this thing about membership. And he said, press this button or whatever you have to do, click on this one. So I clicked on it. And there was David Fell telling us all about what it's like to be a member of Rotary. So I listened to the, this 25 minute video. <laughs> uh, actually, in fairness, I think it's about six minutes, nine seconds. But actually, he made it so interesting that I thought I might even join Rotary. <laughs> But it, do go to the uh, Rotary Club of Hornchurch and Upminster website if you're not Rotarians. Have a look, flick through, press these buttons and click on things. Look at all the things they do and you will be amazed. You get a link to YouTube for David and I believe there's probably one for you as well. I had to go to the 10 mile road race. Um, <laughs> but, have a look at what they do, and I'm not going to list all the things that the 
this Rotary Club undertakes. I'm not going to list all the things that they use, the money they raise, to, to help others, not only in this locality, but internationally. But I really, and in addition to that, they undertake social functions like this, and they enjoy themselves. So they pack all this into the year, a lot of them in their spare time. But there's just one final mystery I have, which is doing all the things you do, how on earth do you find the time to read the bull? <laughs> because I, I have looked at it before, and I have got a hard copy of it earlier, but today I think there's 47 pages of the current issue, and it does take quite a time just to flick through the pages without looking at them. It, an enormous amount of work goes into that. It's so, it gives you so much insight into what this club does. And I, I'm really thankful that a club like yours exists, and I thank you for what you do for Rotary. Thank you. somewhere it's really, really important because we've got a couple of entertainers now. I can't make them up. Yes, I um, uh, When I was at school, I was so privileged to, to come across youngsters who were so talented, far, far talented than myself, and to get the actual chance for them to, to accompany them and, and listen to them and, and, and know how, you know, just see and wonder how they're going to blossom. And these two young men, Andrew and his younger brother, Ryan, were just two phenomenal young musicians at 11 years old. They have gone on now. Music is uh, their life, and uh, they are fast becoming young professionals. Still studying, of course, but fast becoming young professionals. And I do so hope you're going to enjoy what they are going to perform for us. I do understand if you have to sneak off because you have to get somewhere very, very important, and one or two people do. Um, I, you are excused. But I do so hope that you're not in a great hurry because they're going to entertain us for um, 20, 25, half an hour, 30 minutes. Um, just um, and uh, just to finish off well, I think it's been a lovely meal and a lovely afternoon. So thank you for your support. I really enjoyed this afternoon and I hope you're going to enjoy these two young men. Give them a nice round of applause. Thank you. 
Did you enjoy that? Yes. Yeah, wasn't it wonderful? Um, I know some of you have got to get off, but to get to give them another, another round of applause. Yes. Um, and maybe they could play something while we're going, but, <laughs> but um, you know, so long, it's been good to see you, all that sort of, sort of thing. But um, I should mention the flowers. Now, oh, no, oh. Sorry, Jeff was telling me to do the flowers. No one was going to tell you to do the flowers. Now, these flowers, we usually have um, uh, some, somebody to do with nearest birthday. But what we'd like you to do on your table is to decide how you wish for a lady on your table to have the flowers. The men can have the leftover bottles, but the, the, the flowers. Um, and just put your, I don't know, one table's going to put the ladies' um, uh, tabs in a box and then they get... They get to draw. Oh, we've got two on our table. <laughs> so, um, so you you decide how you're going to do it. I hope you've had a lovely afternoon. I think these guys have put the icing on my cake this afternoon. Um, I know, a lovely time. It's all over. <laughs> I know it's not, the job's not all over, nor is it for Neil for another couple of weeks, but it feels like that. It's like being let out of school. Uh, so uh, I'm going to wish you uh, run through and peace the world over, everybody.